Harvick's up to 11th. Restarted 28th just a couple of laps ago. Look at Biffle right in the middle. Careful, Greg, got a good spot. Wisely backed off the gas. DJ still trying to put the 24 car lap down. Here comes a 97. And the, seven. and the seven. Yep, Jimmy Spencer. Jeff Gordon desperate here to stay in front of the leader. If he can get in front of the leader and come in and get four tires, he can make a charge and make something on it today. But he just can't be in front of the leader when the caution falls, it seems like, despite all the yellows we've had today. DJ. Oh, man, he's blinding that front, and front uh, air down off the car. And soft springs and everything. Well, I can't believe. It just tells me how hard, how much DJ wants this, how hard he's driving that thing, Marty. Well, he wants to win, BP. It's been a while since DJ, DJ won. It was February at Rockingham. Sean Parker said the rock just now started. NASCAR did come and say he needed to check for smoke. Sean said it's fine. Don't worry about it. But remember, this 88 car does have to stop again. They are 10 laps short on fuel. That's heartbreaking. This is the first race Dale Jarrett has led since Talladega, the eighth race of the season. This is race 23. Oh, look at that run that Kurt Busch has coming off the corner. Behind him, Jimmy Spencer, Sterling Marlin. Hey, Jeff Dirk Gordon is not laying down on this field. He's trying as best he can. It's Bill Elliott creeping into the picture at the front of the race. I haven't talked about him all day. He's kind of been mired in the middle of the pack. I think that's another car that's probably going to have to make a pit stop before this thing is over. Dale Jarrett last stopped at lap 135, so 65 to go. That's uh, why he's going to be so much short. <laughs> oh, that tire rub's not getting any better, is it? Oh, here yeah. we go. Bush on the outside for the lead. Got him. Bush back out in front. Kurt's going to run high. DJ's going to run low. DJ's car doesn't smoke like that. Do not worry about fuel. Do not worry about any fuel. All right. It was Jimmy Finning, wasn't it? That was Dale Jarrett's radio Dale show. Jarrett's radio. Wow, what a little stretch of race this has been. The running order jumbled up. Some of the guys that were up front earlier trying to come back through the field. Ryan Newman has gotten back by Kevin Harvick. That's ninth, eighth, ninth, and tenth. Kevin Harvick got by Robbie Gordon there. that on that last pit stop, Harvick took four tires, Ryan Newman didn't. Harvick has uh, put a couple people between himself and Jimmy Johnson, so Jimmy not able to keep up with Kevin here as they slice their way through traffic. Robbie Gordon, Greg Biffle, and Steve Park, 31, 16, and 30 racing for position there. That's 10th, 11th, and 12th. Biffle's done a nice job today. He's a very good race car today. Results for Greg Biffle. Two Craftsman Truck Series starts here, one of both. Two NASCAR Bush Series races here prior to yesterday. Didn't finish either one of them. He could just come up, he gets clear, Robbie Gordon. He'd be okay. Oh! I don't know if he was clear. Wow. Here Robbie, comes. Robbie's going to give him a little bump for that. Whoa, yeah. look out. Oh, he did give him a bump. Got him sideways, getting in turn three. This ain't over yet. NASCAR race director David Hoots saying, calm the 31 driver down, please. And here comes Jimmy Johnson, that 48 car, the Lowe's car. Bill, looking good for that 48 car. 
Yeah, not just for today, Benny, but for the big picture. Chad Knauss had to put four tires and top him off with fuel because they're running for the championship. Could be a big day for him here. Jimmy Johnson restarted in the back of this pack, restarted 27th, and then has climbed into the top 15. Similar story for Tony Stewart, restarted 23rd, now inside the top 15. He said the car is still sliding around. The last chassis adjustments did not tighten the car the way Tony wanted. Roger Purcell is the engine tuner for the 20, works under Mark, Mark Cronquist at Joe Gibbs Racing. This morning I walked into the garage, I said, what are you doing? He was sitting on the floor, he said, I'm worried about fuel mileage. They think they can make it now, I asked him, can you make it? He said, we'll run out, taking the checkers. But they are also concerned because the 18 car, their teammate, Bobby Labonte, did not finish this race, engine failure. So Tony Stewart, Running right now in 12th position, racing for that spot there with Steve Park in the uh, 30 of those. Tony just went by Steve to pick up the spot. Home Depot car still down on the racetrack. I would imagine he'll be there when they throw the checkered flag today because Tony Stewart, that's his MO at these racetracks. He just runs on the bottom of the track. Ryan Newman trying to take sixth place from Michael Waltrip. Newman's smoking. I mean, I, and I don't mean literally smoking. I mean, he's fast trying to come up through the pack. This is Kevin Harvick's view. Now Harvick racing for seventh spot with Mikey. Kevin Harvick, I started this story a minute ago, and then we jumped to something else. The big blackout that you've read so much about, many of you no doubt experienced and lived through, hit downtown Detroit in a big way on Thursday afternoon. Kevin Harvick was signing autographs at a Chevrolet dealership in downtown Detroit when the power went out on Thursday. Had a whole group of people there, he was there, so they decided to continue the autograph session, and they pulled up five Chevy cars in the showroom and turned on the headlights. And Harvick sat there by auto headlight and finished signing autographs for all his fans. Then he and his wife, Delana, jumped in the car and got out in all the heavy traffic and made their way back up toward the racetrack. He said it was a, a really odd experience, but all the fans were very appreciative, and he was glad to be able to sit there and do it for them. <laughs> Did you see the 29 car and the 24 car? All the hand signals coming off turn two back there? Yeah, there were, there were hands out the window. Yeah. I don't think they were happy hands. Third place here, Sterling Marlin on the move in the 40. Now he moved up the racetrack, trying to get Jimmy off the throttle just a little bit so he could squeeze in front of him, and it worked. Yeah. Yeah, you drive up there right next to the guy, and if you have to wait just one little second longer to turn the car, sometimes your car pushes, and like you said, BP, you got to get out of the throttle and got the spot. A great job today by that 40 team. Changed engine, started last in this race. And now they're up to third. Kurt Busch is out in front, 35 laps to go here at Michigan. Still some fuel drama to be played out in this one, and we've had a lot of caution flags. Are we done with the yellow today?